so I came to UWT because um, I wanted to study ways of creating a better world. I was inspired by the uh, methods of nonviolence as practiced by Gandhi and King. And I like them because they advocate using practical action to confront the injustices in our society. And they advocate creating greater freedom and equality for all people. I believe the seeds of change exist within our society, but they're hidden, they're difficult to find. And so I'm trying to find some of these seeds by making a documentary film about this man, Father William Bixel, known as Bix to most people. Bix was a Jesuit priest, born and raised in Tacoma. He was a working class priest who rebelled against the church and became a radical anti-nuclear activist and community builder. Bix is a man of action and he lived the values of nonviolence by taking his beliefs and values and acting them out. And he did that in many ways. For example, he wanted to work with the homeless and the mentally ill, and he did that by founding Guadalupe House, where he lived in community with them. Guadalupe House became part of the Tacoma Catholic Worker, which continues to provide housing and services to the homeless and mentally ill. And it's also where Bix lived until his death last year. Uh, Bix also led protests against war, militarization, and nuclear weapons. He was arrested over 40 times in his life and spent more than two years in prison. In 2009, when he was 82 years old, he and four others in their 60s and 80s, these people right here, they participated in the Disarm Now Plowshares protest action. They broke into the Bangor nuclear sub-base near Bremerton and walked to where the nuclear weapons are stored in their bunkers. They poured vials of blood on, their bunk on those bunkers in protest and were violently arrested by the Marines. Bix told me that when he was laying hooded and handcuffed, face down in the mud, he felt the presence of Jesus in that moment, and it was one of the greatest moments of his life. In 2013, I wrote an oral history of Bix and the Disarmament of Plowshares action. And I realized he was interested in a lot of the same goals as me, but was coming at them from a very different angle. I'm not a religious person, and Bix obviously is, and he's very, he was very inspired by his Catholicism and by his faith. But I realized that I could learn a lot by trying to figure out what he was doing and how it related to the change that I was also trying to bring about. And uh, I realized it could broaden my imagination about the possibilities of resistance and the ways that people can make change in the world. So I decided to expand my oral history project into a documentary film. And that documentary film has become my master's project. My documentary won't look just at his life and work, but also at the tools and the ideas that he used to create change. And by making this project as a film, I hope to share those tools and ideas with others. I believe Bix's life is an example of a life of resistance against the oppressions of our society. And I think by telling his story, I can find some of the clues about how he did that. Uh, I'm using the methods of oral history. I'm continuing to use those methods in my film. I conducted interviews with Bix before he passed away, and I'm continuing to conduct interviews with those who knew him and worked with him. And through those inter interviews, I'm hoping to find some of these clues and uncover these seeds of change. So I'm going to share one of the uh, themes I'm exploring in my film, which is the theme of personal transformation. Bix grew up as a straight-laced, by-the-book kind of guy. He was very devoted to the church and the Jesuit order. When I asked him how he became a radical priest, he told me about going to protests, uh, getting involved in anti-racism activism, beginning to work with the mentally ill and the homeless as a counselor. He told me about practical steps that he took. But when I spoke to others, they who knew him, they told me a deeper story. Joe Powardrudis was one of Bix's closest friends and was like a son to him. Uh, Joe told me that Bix required a lot of structure in his life. In his youth, the church and the Jesuit order gave him that structure, but as it became more political, the church's connections to money and power really began to disturb him, and he distanced himself from the church. But that left Bix groundless and led him into a deep personal crisis. He needed to find new grounding, and he was able to do that by transforming his need for structure into a critique of structure. He was still devoted to the idea of structure, but now began to look at how those structures created iniquity in our world. Uh, he investigated the causes of homelessness and poverty and the ways that public money is diverted from social use to the uh, paying for weapons of war. I believe his personal transformation can tell us a lot about how developing a critical view of society can lead to action and lead us to uh, creating change in our own lives. Now, I'm not making this documentary because I want us to imitate Bix. We can't all be radical priests. But instead, I'm ho I hope by telling his story, I can inspire people to find ways in their own lives of merging their values with their actions and discovering new ways of resisting the oppressions of our society.